Welcome back. This is part two of the RV shower remodel series. We've already covered how to put the appropriate studs into the RV wall so that we can have something solid to anchor our shower to. And as a stud, I'm sure you'd personally love to see how we attach the shower to them. But first, stud or studliette, we gotta fix our wayward RV plumbing. By the end of this video, we'll have accomplished running our water pipes and drain piping as well as install the shower base. We'll be using CPVC instead of the RV's PEX pipe and PVC instead of the RV's ABS piping. If your initial response to that sentence was, huh? Go back and check out our video on how to glue and run these kinds of piping. Just click the link provided. Now, if you recall from our first video, the measurement to the center of the drain in this shower base is 12 inches off of each wall. This is gonna provide the center point that we need to make a large hole so that we can attach the plumbing underneath. Now, here's our next challenge. Stupidly, there is a tiny metal support in the floor that is in our way. Curse you, little tiny metal support. If that weren't enough, the following challenge is that I can't just bring the water pipes up from underneath through the wall like I would like to because of how it's laid out under the floor. How can we possibly run water pipes to the shower? Well, stay tuned for more on that. But back to the shower drain hole. It should be about four and a half inches wide at least. So we're gonna mark a circle and we're gonna cut off the plywood on top using a wood cutting device like this multi-purpose tool. Understand, because we don't want to compromise the strength of the floor, I'm going to add another piece of wood to act as a supportive joist. This wood though, as I will later discover, will get right in the way of my working, so I'll remove it, but I'm gonna put it back before closing up the floor. To get this two by four in place, it will require pre-drilling holes two on each side that goes through the wood and then through the metal. Then we can add the screws. Next, we're gonna cut out a hole in the floor for the shower drain plumbing. Now, since it's metal, I'm gonna be using my Sawzall with a metal cutting blade. We're also cutting through styrofoam here, so naturally we're gonna need to clean up with a vacuum. Also be very conscious of how far through the floor you stick that blade. Absolutely do not cut anything else below the floor because that would be a disaster. Now we have a good size hole in the floor. I'm gonna cut out the wall panel part that is in my way for installing the shower controls. Now the shower control, for those that don't know, is that mechanism that you will be using to turn on the shower to start and stop the water. After making room for it, it's not a bad idea to remark the center of where the shower control goes inside the wall for future reference. Next, we need to create a space for plumbing that will go to the shower controls. There is plumbing underneath this floor a hot side and a cold side of plumbing which I will connect into. Now I can't just drill down through the wall because then I end up in a space that I can't reach, like I mentioned before. Because the shower base has a lip with a gap that sits next to the wall, I'm able to run the two new half-inch CPVC pipes next to the wall. And then I'm able to jog them up into the wall while I'm staying concealed underneath the shower base. This is an abnormal thing to do, but well, unfortunately in this case it's required, like following the speed limit because you see a cop up ahead. So I end up drilling two three quarter inch holes into the ground that's big enough to accommodate two half inch CPVC pipes. In order for the piping to more easily jog, as it were, into the wall, I also cut away part of the wood track or stud that is on the bottom of the wall. Now in case you didn't know, this metal plumbing fitting here is actually God's gift to plumbing. It's called a shark bite. It attaches to copper, CPVC, and PEX piping with much ease, so it will make the perfect adapter for us when we go from PEX pipe to CPVC. We'll show how just shortly. Now this here black plastic pipe is the old ABS inch and a half drain pipe for the old shower and lavatory sink. You're likely going to find black pipes like this in your RV. It's useless to us now, so we're gonna take it out back and shoot it. But first we gotta cut it to the point where we're gonna be connecting our new drain piping. We can trace it underneath to this point. Cutting the pipe lower is better because then it gives us more space to run our new drain pipe back up. Sawzalls are my favorite tools for cutting plastic drain piping, but sometimes other tools like this multi-purpose oscillating tool are better. Try to get a clean, straight cut. Check out our video on that linked below. After the cut, we'll remove it and share fond memories with it. Now remember those shark bite fittings we were talking about before? You'll note on the end of each one is a beige plastic part that covers the pipe that's inserted. 
If ever you need to easily pop the shark bite off, use a tool like a wrench to essentially push back that plastic piece into the shark bite fitting while you try to pop it off the pipe. There is actually a special orange plastic tool that's made for this also, but a wrench will work just fine. This will require you to use some counter pressure on the pipe while you try and yank it off. For this process, we use a good pair of PVC cutters. We'll be using this special shark bite, half inch 90, for making the connection between the old PEX pipe and our new CPVC piping. Now this is a view from above of what our PEX pipe looks like underneath. There are two lines coming out, one hot and one cold, but which is which? The way to find out is to test it ahead of time. While they're connected to your old shower before demolition, it should be obvious which one is hot and cold. Of course, you would mark them appropriately, like maybe put a piece of tape on the cold side or something like that. But if you didn't do that, go to your water heater and shut off the valve that's next to it. That's gonna shut off the hot water through the whole RV. One of these two pipes will stop running water then, thus indicating which one is the hot water pipe. Now before doing this, make sure that your water is shut off to the RV and open up a sink somewhere else to drain the pressure in the water lines. Also, this is a good time to shut off the power to your water heater itself, perhaps in a circuit breaker. Now when cutting with PVC cutters, I like to move it back and forth while squeezing the trigger. Sometimes the old pipes, if you cut just straight down on the pipe, it could actually cut a little crack into the pipe from the pressure of the blade. Make sure to have something under the pipe also to catch the water that's likely going to come out. Now I'm gonna cap off both the hot and the cold sides with a shark bite cap for now. But later, I'll put that shark bite 90 on to run it to where I need it to go. Before you run the pipes up the wall, knock in or pull out the nails that are sticking out through the back side of the wall. This will make it so that when your pipes are installed, nothing is going to ever accidentally cut them inside the wall or puncture them. Now let's skip ahead and I'm going to show you what the plumbing looks like on the hot side. Now we want to get the cold side to look the same through this hole on the right. Take note also underneath how that one shark bite cap I put on before is now replaced with a shark bite 90. I love shark bites. Yeah. Can you dig it? Before we continue, please take a quick moment to like this video. Just click it. It's really easy down there on the left side. And don't forget to leave a comment or question below. Tell us what kind of awesome bathroom remodel you want to do. Also, stay tuned because we're going to see how you can get past the challenge of installing a residential shower control into your shower, even though it's designed for thicker residential walls. Dun, dun, dun. Now back to the CPVC. We want a pipe to stick up about this far to get to where we need. So we'll measure and cut accordingly. We're going to measure from the ceiling of this, um, I, I guess, basement or, or undercover storage area here down to the pipe to where we need to connect to. You know, where our shark bite cap is. We'll also add the measurement of the floor itself. After adding it up, we cut our needed length of pipe. Let's glue CPVC 90s on each piece and line them up where they'll be sitting when completed. In doing so, we can get the accurate measurement of the pipe that's going to be connecting to them. Using a precise measurement system. I can see it's about this long. After we connect them, we can drop it in place. Now we need two more lengths of pipe. The first one's gonna bring it away from the wall underneath, and then the second is going to be the length of pipe that runs it over to that shark bite 90. In order to get this length, we need to measure off the same wall. First to the shark bite 90, and then second off the same wall to where our pipe will actually be run. Now only because there's so many pipes down here do we need to actually check if it's going to fit where we're trying to run it. When we're good to go, we'll cut the pipe and glue a 90 on it. And from there we can glue that piece to the CPVC that is running through the floor. It's easy to make this piece straight off the wall by simply lining it up parallel with this straight piece. Lastly, get the measurement for the last piece of CPVC you need to cut, whether you're by tape measure or by marking it with your thumb. After gluing it with a 90 to the CPVC, we just now need to connect it to the Shark Bite 90. So using a wrench or some other small tool, remove that shark bite cap we already put on. 
we can now slap the Shark Bite 90 on instead. Expect to push these on about 7 eighths of an inch to an inch onto the PEX and CPVC pipes that we'll be marrying together. Catch the water that dribbles out and clean up the rest. Before we continue any further, put Shark Bite caps onto the open ends of your CPVC and wait at least about 20 minutes since you last glued one of the fittings. Then turn on the water to the system slowly and pressurize it, testing the fortitude of your pipes you just installed. Check for leaks for a few minutes, and if it seems good, then shut off your water so that we can move on to the next step. We're gonna be jumping into our nice new uh, Moen shower control set. I've already opened up the box a little bit. This right here is our shower control. And so uh, hopefully you're not looking at this like it's completely alien to you, but I'm gonna try and explain this as best as I can. So this is what's gonna be going into the wall. This is gonna be controlling what's hot and cold. It's gonna be about 45 inches to 48 inches, depending on where you wanna stick it on the wall. Now the problem that we have here is that it sticks out pretty far. And the reason why that's the case is because the wall itself is I believe an inch and a half thick. Whereas normal walls and houses are three and a half inches thick. Normally you can just stick this in the wall, no problem. Maybe stick a, 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 a two by four behind it and you can hold it in and you're good to go. Just plumb up to it. But here, unfortunately you can't do that because we've got this wall issue. So what we need to do is actually cut into this wall and bring this wall out a little bit or push it back in more. And then that way we can get it into the right depth. So the question is, how deep do you actually put this into the wall? Well, it's based completely on this. This is a plaster guard ground. I don't know exactly what the name is, but basically this here, it protects this while you're working around it. And so when you stick it on all the way, that gives you the idea of where it needs to be, how deep. This right here, this face of it right here, needs to be flush with your finished wall. So where your tile ends, that's where this should also be ending as well. So we're gonna to have to do some measuring. For example, I know off of this, I'm gonna put some quarter inch Durock board. So it's gonna be a quarter inch thick added on here. And then I've got also, let me check real quick. And also I've got this Durock here, which is gonna be our finished tile. It's not tile, this is PVC, uh, but great for working in RVs uh, because it's not that heavy. You don't want too many heavy things in your RV if you can help it. A little tile ain't gonna kill anything, but still. This is 3 16 thick and so if you add 3 16 to the quarter inch here uh, what's that that's gonna be 7 16 which is just under a half inch so that means that just under a half inch or 7 16 which is the actual measurement this right here can stick off of this wall 7 16 so I need to push it back into the wall until I get it just right and that's gonna take bunch of finagling and just making sure till you get it just right and this is very important that we get it right so let's do it right also make sure when you install this that you install this the right way not like this not like this but there's actually when you're installing this you're installing it the correct way with this little knobby part up how do we know it because it literally says it right there Bring. first we're going to mark the height of where the shower controls go then i'm going to cut out more space in the wall including part of the stud that's next to it so that we have more room to install the pipes. Some things to note here, I'm going to leave this eighth inch wall board that was already here attached to all the studs in the wall reasonably that I can. Also, there can be wiring in walls like this. So don't cut into the wall too far, just go past the material you're trying to cut. Now let me explain what I did here because I didn't really record this process. First of all, this attached two x four here will be what I screw my shower control into. See the measurement here? I'm checking to make sure that my shower control depth will stick out to 7 16 of an inch past the wall board. Like what I mentioned before was my target depth. To accomplish that, I went into the living room cabinet and made sure to cut out a hole in the wall and then I installed a plywood shelf. I'm trying to make it match what the other shelves will look like. And so later I will install a piece of trim wood on the front to have it match the rest. Having that plywood there gives me something solid to attach 2x4 to. I'm going to end up installing a faux wall over that 2x4 so that when I'm done, you're practically going to think it was part of the original RV design. Of course, this requires some carpentry skills, but nothing too crazy. 
Now it's time to screw in our shower control with two screws. There's going to be two obvious holes in the back of this mowing control that you can screw through. Don't just slam the screw in there before putting the other one in. Make sure they go in pretty evenly for a better install. If possible, or applicable in the case of an off-kilter RV, balance a torpedo level on the pipe outlet on the top of the shower control so that you can see that it's being installed level. Next we'll use pipe thread sealant, or pipe dope, along with Teflon tape. First apply the Teflon tape in this way as you see, going clockwise with the pipe, following with how you would thread on a pipe fitting. After three to four turns, just pull on the tape so that it naturally breaks off. Then apply a fair amount of pipe dope around the Teflon tape. For this application, I always use brass female adapters. There is a much better guarantee of them never failing compared to screwing on CPVC female adapters. At first, screw it on slowly to make sure it's not cross-threaded, and when it seems to be comfortably attached, you can apply more pressure, in fact, using a wrench to make it pretty tight in the end. This will ensure no leaks. Now do the same method on the remaining pipe inlets and outlets. The bottom outlet is for a tub spout, which naturally we're not going to have, so what we're going to do is just glue in a small half-inch pipe with a CPVC cap on it. Remember how the shower control has to be installed deeper into this RV wall? Doing so makes it so that the piping may not easily line up with the piping that will be feeding it. So to get around this and not bend these pipes into uncomfortable positions, we'll be installing a quick jog in the pipe using two 45 degree angle fittings. Just so you know, one is actually called a 45 and the other is called a street 45. Basically it's the same fitting except that instead of having two hubs, it has a hub and the other side of it and it's the same size of a half inch pipe, allowing you to make the connection without taking up more space. Next is just a matter of connecting all the pipes together, hot to the left side and cold to the right side. This will require some 90s or 90 degree CPVC fittings to accomplish this. We'll figure out where we want our shower head to go and measure the length of the pipe it takes to reach it. I also installed a board behind the wall so that we are screwing into more than just 8th inch material. I'll pretty it up and make it part of the cabinet in the living room. No one will be the wiser. After gluing that together and screwing it in, we have ourselves a solid set of durable, pretty pipes. It's almost too bad we have to close the wall in on them. Now take a close look at your mowing cartridge in the middle of your shower controls and make sure that those little lines or ridges are lined up like you see here. If not, when you turn on your water, you'll have a certified fountain flying in your shower way before it's ready. Of course, those ridges on the cartridge uh, don't apply if you are installing another brand of shower control. Now before you close in the walls, remember to turn on your water and leave it under pressure for a time at least 20 minutes after the glue dried. This way you can test for leaks while you are in an easier position to fix it. Always double check that there's no nails or screws sticking into the wall around your plumbing so that there are no accidents when the walls are closed up. If there's a good spot to do this, go ahead and strap down your pipes using half inch plastic straps. Whew, all right, now it's all about the base, the shower base, pay attention. Your shower base needs a drain attached to it before we install it. Using advanced silicone, as seen here, Go ahead and silicone around the top of your unscrewed shower drain like so. I should have used clear color instead of white, but in the end it didn't actually squeeze out too much, so it was an easy cleanup. White would have been better if the shower base itself was also white. The underside of the shower drain will be installed like so with the rubber washer touching the shower base. Screw it on like so, and with somebody holding it from above, go ahead and use some large pliers to tighten it on more so. If you want to get some grease on there to help lubricate it for better turning, use a silicone based grease. It's plastic, so you can't really murder it on there like you can with the brass fittings, uh, but you want the rubber washer underneath to be compressed enough so that water can't get through it. Of course I make sure that my wooden support that I made before is screwed back in in the floor, and now we can finally install the shower base. So to do this, Drop it where it needs to go and pre-drill out some holes in the upper lip of the shower base into the 2x4s in the wall that we have actually installed. About three screws on each side will probably be enough. Now I recently got a question about 
if I put a cement base product under the shower base for extra support before installing it? My answer is that I didn't. And here's why. First of all, after I screwed the shower base down, it didn't flex too much, showing me that it supported itself well enough. Second, cement is really rigid, and RVs are not. They're flexing a ton as they move down the road, so cement dislodging under flexible materials could potentially cause it to shift or come apart a bit, which wouldn't help the shower base. Lastly, even if the shower base flexes a bit when you stand in it, it shouldn't affect materials like the tile we'll be installing. I won't be using rigid grout, but instead silicone, which moves more like a master yoga instructor. I mean? Once our shower base is installed and screwed in, we can go underneath for perhaps the most annoying part of our journey, running drain pipe in a cramped area. Yay! Don't forget to schedule an appointment with your chiropractor before embarking on this. We have our black inch and a half ABS pipe sticking up that we're connecting to. Using this green PVC to ABS transition cement, we're going to glue the two together. You'll note that I'm putting in a PVC Y-shaped fitting here, literally called a Y fitting. The top is going to go to the shower, and the other end of it is going to connect to a lavatory sink in the future. Since connecting to that sink is not a part of this video, well, don't worry your pretty little head all about it. One important thing to note is that we're going to need a PVC bushing fitting that converts the 2 inch shower drain down to inch and a half pipe, so that our pipes all fit each other. Normal PVC glue and primer are what you use here. Don't be fooled by the shower drain's gray color. Shower drains are always a little shady. In essence, we'll be running inch and a half pipe down from the shower drain. We're going to be connecting a PVC inch and a half 90 above the Y fitting here. Make sure you don't skimp over the primer and glue. The only thing left is making sure to connect that P-trap between the vertical and horizontal pipe. I show this exact process in more detail in the other video that I already mentioned about gluing PVC together. You can click that link, but if you already know how to run PVC, I don't want to be redundant. After it's all glued together, give it a good 24 hours before testing the waters. For the PVC glue, it only needs about 20 minutes. But for the silicone in the shower that we used for the shower drain, I feel it's safer letting it dry for a good day. My method here is only testing the silicone's holding power on the top, as you can see. But later on, I actually fill up the gray tank all the way up so that it backs up into the shower. That is the only way you're going to know that the pipes are watertight and that your rubber washer underneath the shower drain is holding tight and squeezed shut. If you back up those pipes and shower with water for a good 30 minutes and there is no leak, I would say you're home free with some solid plumbing. Congratulations on getting this far, smart guy, or gal, uh, gender equality. Get out of your chair, do your happy dance. Our third section is gonna go into getting our walls up, set up with Durock, Red Guard, and our special sexy lightweight PVC tile known as Duma Wall. Our final section will show how we trim out the shower with our fantastic eye-popping Dreamline door, as well as putting in some other trim pieces together. Leave a great comment, everybody. Please, we love those great comments. Questions are welcome as well. Like this video, subscribe to us, share this video series with your RV friends. Lastly, again, check out Vegan Runner Mommy on Instagram to see how we make some real posh RVs off some not so posh fixer uppers that we sell to the public. See you in the next video.